right, guys. I want to know, did Ben win his competition? Did he show up? What's going to happen with Granny and robbing the crown jewels? We have to read on, right? So let's get started with Chapter 21, A Tap Shoe, from David Williams' Gangster Granny. Ben sat, ben sat silently in the back of the little brown car in his love bomb outfit. I hope you don't forget about the competition, Ben, said Mum as she fixed her makeup in the passenger seat, her lipstick accidentally scrawling across her face as they went around a corner. No, of course not, Mum. Don't worry, son, continued Dad as he proudly drove his son to the dance competition immortality. You've done so much training up in your bedroom. I know you'll get top marks from all the judges. Straight tens. What about Granny? Won't she be expecting me? Said Ben anxiously. Tonight was supposed to be the night they had stole the crown jewels, but instead he was on his way to take part in a dance competition, despite never having danced a step in his life. For the last two weeks he had avoided thinking about the dance competition, but now the time had come. It was really going to happen. He was going to have to dance a solo number which he hadn't prepared, in front of an entire theater full of people. Oh, don't worry about Granny, said Mum. She doesn't know what day it is, she laughed, as the car stopped suddenly at a red light, and mascara splattered over her forehead. They arrived at the town hall. Ben saw a rushing river of multicolored lycra making its way into the building. If anyone at school found out he'd entered, he would never live this down. The bullies would have all the ammunition they ne would need to make his life hell forever. And what's more, he hadn't rehearsed his dance. Not even once. He didn't have a clue what he was going to do on stage. This was a competition to find the best junior dancers in the local area. There was a prize for best couple, best solo female, and best solo male. If you won here, you would get a chance to compete for your country, or for your county. If you won here, you would get the chance to compete for your county. And if you won there for your country. This was the first step on the road to international dance superstardom. And the host for the Strictly Stars was none other than Strictly Stars dancing heartthrob and his mom's favorite, Flavio Flavioli. It's wonderful to see all these beautiful ladies here tonight, he purred in his Italian accent. Flavio looked even more shiny in real life. His hair was slicked back. His teeth were dazzling white, and his outfit was as tight as cling film. Now we are ready to rumba! The crowd all screamed, Yes! Flavio can't hear you! I said, Are you ready to rumba? Yes! They all screamed again, a little louder than before. Ben was listening nervously backstage. He heard one woman's voice screech, I love you, Flavio! It sounded suspiciously like his mum. Ben looked around the dressing room. It might as well have been a convention for the most annoying children in the world. They looked so unbearably precocious, adorned in the remote, these ridiculous garish lycra outfits, smeared in fake tan, and with pearly white teeth so bright they could be seen from outer space. Ben looked anxiously at his watch, knowing he was going to be terribly late to meet his granny. He waited and waited as the over-made-up, quick-stepped, jived, waltzed, Viennese waltzed, tingoed, fox-trotted, and cha-cha-chawed. Finally, Ben's turn came. He stood in the wings as Flavio announced him. Now it's time for the local boy who is going to delight us all tonight with a solo dance piece. Please welcome Ben! Flavio glided off the stage as Ben plodded on his Lycra love bomb outfit riding uncomfortably up his bottom. Ben stood alone in the middle of the dance floor. A spotlight shone on him. The music started up. He was praying for some sort of escape from this. He would have been happy with anything at all, including a fire alarm, an earthquake, World War III, another ice age, a deadly swarm of killer bees, a meteor from outer space hitting the earth and spinning it off its axis, a tidal wave, Flavio Flavioli being attacked by hundreds of flesh-eating zombies. A hurricane or tornado. Ben didn't really know what the difference was, but either would do. Ben being abducted by aliens. 
and not returning to Earth for thousands of years. Dinosaurs returning to the Earth through some kind of time-space portal and smashing through the roof, devouring everyone inside. A volcano erupting. Though, annoyingly, there didn't seem to be any volcanoes nearby. An attack of giant slugs. Even an attack of medium-sized slugs would do. Ben wasn't fussy. Any of the above would have sufficed. The music played for a while, and Ben realized he hadn't moved his body yet. He looked over at his parents, who beamed with pride, seeing their only child center stage at last. He looked to the wings, where the ever-smiling Flavio was giving him an encouraging grin. Please make the ground open up now. It didn't. There was no choice but to do something anything. Ben started moving his legs, then his arms, then his head. None of these parts of his body moved in time or sequence, and for the next five minutes he threw his body around the dance floor in a style that can only be called unforgettable. As much as you might want to forget it, you can't. Ben tried a jump at the end, just as the music stopped, and he fell to the floor with a thud. There was a silence deafening silence. Then Ben could hear the sound of one pair of hands clapping. He looked up. It was his mum. Then another pair of hands joined in. It was his dad. For a few seconds, he thought it might be one of these moments you see in a film when the underdog triumphs against all odds, that soon everyone in the hall would be on their feet, cheering and applauding this local boy who had at last made his loved ones proud and at the same time reinvented dancing forever. The end. Well, no. That's not what happened. After a few moments, his parents felt embarrassed to be the only people applauding and stopped. Flavio returned to the stage. Well, that was... Uh, that was... For the first time, the Italian heartthrob seemed lost for words. Uh, judges, can we have your scores for Ben, please? Zero, said the first. Zero. Zero. Only one more judge to go. Could Ben make it four zeros? But the final judge must have felt sorry for the sweaty little boy in front of her, who had shamed his family for generations with his epic display of talentless talentlessness. She shuffled her scoring paddles under her desk. One, she announced. There were loud boos and jeers from the audience as she corrected her score. I'm sorry, I mean zero she said, holding up her original choice of paddle. Slightly disapproving scores from the judges there, said Flavio, still trying hard to smile. But young Ben is not all, is all not lost, all is not lost. As the only boy who entered the solo male category tonight, you are therefore the winner. May I present you with this solid plastic statuette? Flavio picked up a cheap-looking trophy of a dancing boy and presented it to Ben. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a round of applause for Ben. There was silence again. Even Mum and Dad didn't dare clap. Then boo started. And then jeers and cat calls. Shouts of, shame on you! No! And fix! Flavio's perfect smile began to crack. He leaned down to Ben and whispered in his ear, You better get out of here before you get lynched. At that exact moment, a tap shoe was thrown from the back of the audience. It flew at speed through the air. It was probably aimed at Ben, but instead it hit Flavio right between his the eyes, and he fell to the ground unconscious. Time to make my excuses and leave, thought Ben. And that's going to do it for Chapter 21. Love Bomb was not a success, was it? All right, answer your questions. We'll see if he gets to Grandma's and get those crown jewels. See you tomorrow.